I've decided to make a video about these cheap Bluetooth receivers. You may have seen them in some of my previous DIY speaker projects, but I think they deserve a video of their own. So let me explain what they do and how to use them. I will also cover some of the issues you may have with them and how to solve them. So first of all, what do these even do? This is a Bluetooth audio receiver. When you power it on, it will appear on your phone as an available Bluetooth device. And when the two are connected, any sound or music that you play on your phone will be sent wirelessly to the receiver. The module then outputs an analog signal which can be fed into an audio device like a speaker system. These receivers allow you to cheaply and easily add Bluetooth to things like old stereos and radios, car amplifiers, iPod speaker docks, pretty much anything that has analog audio input. That would typically be in the form of a 3.5mm jack or a set of RCA connectors. You can even hook up wired earphones to them and they will work just fine. And if you want to get a receiver like this, they have them on Amazon or AliExpress. I'll have links for you in the video description, just make sure you watch the whole video because these things have issues. I've seen various different models on sale. I think I've ordered 4 or 5 receivers from different AliExpress sellers over the past few years and here are two that I haven't used for any projects yet. This one appears to have a model name of VHM314 and the other appears as HWBT. Sometimes these names may be indicated in the title of the listing. And it appears there are other different models that I have not tested yet. The impressions I share in this video are only based on these two receivers. As you can see, they look very similar. They are the same size and they might be even using the same chip. When you buy them, you can usually pick the type of connector that you want, micro USB or the newer USB Type-C. And now, here are a few things that these modules cannot do. Number one, you don't get controls for volume or playback. In fact, most of these modules do not have any buttons for anything, although there are versions with buttons and switches. If you have earphones connected to them, the buttons on the headset will not work, and in my case the microphone doesn't work either. But again, models with a microphone do seem to exist. Also, these don't have an amplifier, so you cannot connect them to passive speakers directly. I have to mention this specific Amazon listing because they claim their modules can be connected to a PC and work as a sound card. Neither of my modules can do that, but it is not impossible for that particular receiver to support this feature. They also mentioned that their module can decode lossless audio formats like FLAC, but this is surely not possible over Bluetooth. If you play a lossless audio file from your phone, it will be reproduced, but it's guaranteed to undergo some lossy compression as it is sent over Bluetooth to the receiver. Keep in mind that when you buy one of these, all you get is the receiver itself, unless the listing specifically says otherwise. This means you will have to provide your own audio cable, power cable and 5 volt power supply. Of course, that is to be expected when this module costs only a couple of dollars. But if you are like me and have a big bag full of cables and chargers, you may already have all of that. You power the receiver through this USB connector. You can hook it up to a power bank, a computer's USB port or a phone charger and it will instantly turn on and enter pairing mode. There is no dedicated power switch or automatic shutdown on any of the models that I have and this can be annoying in certain situations. For example, here I have the receiver connected to a pair of PC speakers. Even after I turn the speakers off, the Bluetooth receiver is still powered on because it has its own power supply. This means I have to manually disconnect my phone from it. Not a big deal, but it's an extra step I wish I didn't have to do. Something to keep in mind if you intend to power the receiver from a USB Type-C port. This might not work. A properly designed Type-C port will not provide 5 volts unless you have a specific set of resistors connected to the data pins. A way around this is to use a USB Type-A to Type-C connection if possible or just get the micro USB version of the receiver instead. You may also power the board without relying on the USB connector. You may solder wires to these two points over here and connect the receiver to something like a battery. According to their specs, the modules require between 3.7 and 5.5 volts to work. In my experience, they will go down to 3.5, 3.4 volts, but weird things start to happen. Every 3 minutes, they give me an annoying low battery warning. No battery. Please charge. 
the sound gets distorted too. So be sure to power these with 3.8 volts or more. They consume about 20 to 30 milliamps maximum when playing music, so you should have no troubles powering them. Ok, now how do you connect the Bluetooth receiver to a set of speakers? The easiest way is to use its 3.5mm jack with the appropriate cable, depending on what you are connecting it to. For example, an old iPod dock may have a 3.5mm input jack on the back, but a hi-fi amplifier will probably have RCA connectors like these. For more advanced DIY projects, you can solder your own wires to the pads over here. There's two for the left and the right channels, and one for a common ground connection. If you choose to do this, be sure that your wires are as short as possible to prevent them from picking up any noise. To test the Bluetooth range of my receivers, I took them to this scientific testing facility. Then I plugged a pair of headphones into the receiver, put on some music from my phone, and started walking away from it. At a distance of just 4 meters, this red module started to cut off, and at 6 meters the music stopped completely. The other module did much better. The music got choppy at the 8 meter mark and was completely out at about 12 meters away from my phone. Both of these receivers have a considerably worse range compared to a quality set of Bluetooth headphones. 12 meters of coverage are ok for most situations where you would use a module like this, but the 6 meters that I got out of the red module are just not good enough, even for something this cheap. The sound quality from these receivers is perfectly acceptable, there is no hissing or beeping when no music is playing, and the volume level gets high. Even at maximum volume there is no clipping, and the signal level is consistent across the audible frequency range. And by the way, there is no delay when playing video, which is good. Of course, the sound quality you get with these modules will depend on your streaming service or the type of files that you're playing, and on the speakers that you have them connected to. They do not support any fancy codecs like Qualcomm APTX or Sony LDAC, but overall they sound fine. Someone in the comments on Amazon says their receiver is noisy, but this appears to be an isolated case. They do not provide any details, but I am assuming the issue is caused by a ground loop. For a ground loop to form, you need two pieces of equipment, let's say an amplifier and a Bluetooth receiver and the two need to be connected with a cable that has a ground connection, such as an audio cable. Now look what happens when both devices are connected to power, a ground loop is formed. Here's what that looks like in practice. This is the receiver, this is the amplifier that I built in my previous video, and for this demonstration I am intentionally using longer cables, because that increases the amount of noise that we'll get. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Inside a device like a Bluetooth speaker, where you would also have individual amplifier and a Bluetooth receiver, these negative effects of a ground loop can be largely eliminated by optimizing the placement of every component. But with these receivers, you can avoid a ground loop altogether. You do that by powering them from their own dedicated power adapter. And if you are using them for a custom DIY speaker, make sure that your wires are as short as possible. Or use one of these 5 volt isolating transformers. 5 volts go in, 5 volts go out, and the ground is separated, so you get no ground loop. Here is that setup on the breadboard, and the speaker is perfectly silent, there is no noise whatsoever. Some of you may want to know if these modules use any sounds to indicate status. Well, this one beeps like this when I power it on, and then beeps like that when a device is connected. Unfortunately, this other module has the annoying lady voice that is common on cheaper Bluetooth devices. Bluetooth mode. I think I'm gonna call her Betty. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. I don't know if there's a way to disable these notifications other than flashing a new firmware onto the chip or by electrically disconnecting the drivers with a switch like this guy did. If you do, let us know in the comments. I'm also not aware of a way to tell if a module has the lady voice or not, although if you are lucky, this may be mentioned in the comments under the listing by someone who already bought one. In conclusion, I think these Bluetooth audio receivers are worth getting. 
The good ones have decent range and audio quality, and they work really well considering what they cost. But it is unfortunate that buying one can be a bit of a gamble, so make sure that you read the comments first to know if the module has the annoying voice notifications and whether it has decent range. Again, I have links in the video description. And if you are making a custom DIY wireless speaker, you can totally use one of these. Just make sure you provide them with stable voltage, use wires as short as possible, and consider adding an isolating transformer to avoid noise issues. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.